got a lot of stuff on the website right now. There's already a manuscript. I assume it's in hands other than mine. It is, right? Correct. Thank goodness. And there's one other, one other uh, point I'd like to make. Sure. This is a perfect time. Um, this isn't about just me anymore. This is about everyone who's listening to my voice. It's about Art Bell. It's about people who respect Art Bell's show and the availability for people to come on, tell their story without the fear of being, you know, threatened. This is a wonderful forum. We need more forums like this. But there's one thing that nobody knows, and I'm going to tell you now. There was a piece of hard evidence that I have, that I had in my possession, that has been examined and safely stored and is now out of this country. Oh my! That piece of evidence will be made available in the near future. Would you care to say what it consists of? We believe it's a control device, something that links the alien to the obelisk. It's a small device with three um, symbols engraved on it, yes. and it has three needles that we believe directly punctures into the arm of the wearer that uh, and we believe it may be a some kind of contact device with the obelisk holy smokes um doctor when and where did you recover this this is new information so this requires a couple of questions i picked that up when i rolled up the extraterrestrial in the thermal blanket it was laying about two or three feet away from his body. At that point, I had no idea what it was. I just grabbed it, threw it in the thermal blanket. Oh, my God. So you've got... Uh, so you, and, and somehow you have managed to preserve that. You've well, done... I, I have managed to preserve that the same way that I've managed to uh, stay out of sight. Uh, I hope some help. I'll say this. Sooner or later, the world's going to know. We're, we're getting into some pretty serious territory here. You took a lie detector test. You passed it. Um, you provided extensive photographic uh, a documentation, uh, which, by the way, nobody has torn apart yet, and a lot of people have tried, uh, except for some silly people that, um, that I dismiss, you know, the usual pixel counters. And, um, and now you're telling me you've got physical evidence documented and safely stashed away in another country. This is getting more serious by the moment. I want people to know what happened. They can choose for themselves whether to believe it or not after right. they see it. But before they see it, it's very difficult to make that statement. I interviewed Travis Walton. They made a movie about what happened to Travis Walton, a very famous abduction case. The movie was called Fire in the Sky. That? that is strange. What is? What are you guys looking at? Looks like the sunset to me. No, Greg, that's east. Sunset behind us 20 minutes ago. Well, what do you think it is then? Maybe a fire, or maybe a plane crash in the woods? Yeah. Yeah, plane crash, it could be. Clients, man. Hey, what the hell is that? Maybe we should just turn back, huh? That's... That's gotta be a fire. Look, it's moving. I saw it. It is a moving five, is it? Look, man. Is it? That's one monster forest fire. Yeah, fire my ass. That ain't no fire, man. What else could it be? What the heck is going on here, Mike? Are you screwing around? No. Mike, maybe, maybe we 
try to do like Greg says and just pull over for, for a minute. So. No, Mike, I want to see what it is. There's only one road out of here and we're on it. If that's a fire, we can't get around it. We're going to be spending the night out here. interviewed Travis and his boss um, and they all took lie detector tests uh, with regard to the abduction case of Travis Walton. I'm just flying saucers but beyond saucers many people report seeing beings from other worlds. How could the theory explain those claims? Consider the case of Travis Walton. Travis is 24 and lives with his family in Snowflake, Arizona. His reported close encounter took place on Wednesday, November 5th, 1975. He and six co-workers were thinning overgrowth in an area south of Heber. It was a little after six in the evening. We were coming out of the woods here, up this road, and uh, we saw this glow through the trees. And when we got in the opening here, we could see this object hovering over here, stopped the truck, and, uh, you know, everybody, wow. Uh, what did it look like? How big was uh, it? How bright? It, it was about 20 feet, 25 feet in diameter, about 8 or 10 feet thick. It was a disc-shaped object, glowing golden color. The encounter took place in the Sitgreaves National Forest in eastern Arizona on the edge of the Magoyan Rim. It's a seismically active area with quartz in the bedrock, a suitable condition for luminous displays. I could hear it, hear, hear a sound when I got up closer, but um, it suddenly got louder and started to move in kind of a uh, wobbling motion, and uh, that scared me, and I decided, you know, I'd better get out of there. And so uh, I raised up to go, and uh, I just felt a numbing shock, a kind of a, just, and blacked out. Um, my coworkers, the guys in the truck, uh, said they saw a beam come out of this craft and hit me in the head and the chest and knocked me backward. This painting is one of several done by Travis's crew boss, Mike Rogers, who says he saw the beam strike Travis. It just knocked him backwards through the air. All of us need to know this. All of us need to see what is going on, not just people in the United States of America, but the people of the world. This is happening everywhere. This is not just happening in one country. I have talked with probably 20 or 30 people in the last two years that there have been events similar to this happen to them or to friends of theirs all over the world. Uh, East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Reed and Robert Wraith. Hi. Hi, Art. How are you doing? Okay, where are you? I'm in Silver Spring, Maryland. All right. Uh, well, my name is Felix. Yeah. I wanted to uh, just sort of commend Dr. Reed for his, uh, his bravery. Thank and you. I wish him best of luck as, as far as getting his life back. Um, the, the thing, one comment I wanted to make was that I've heard the term, the term government thrown out a lot, you know, tonight, and I think people need to take a really hard look at what, what the word government really means. And there is a book, you've had a guest on the show before, uh, David Icke, sure. I-C-K-E, and he's sure. got a book out, right. Truth Shall set, shall set You Free. That's right. And it's really a book I think every thinking person ought to read and just think about it for themselves. I agree. Because it's a very detailed book and it pieces a lot of things together. And, I, you know, I don't want to tell anyone what to believe, but, you know, I say read the book. All right. Exactly. Think about it.